Welcome back. The March existing home sales report out at 10 a.m. Eastern this morning. Prices are expected to come down 1.7 percent. Mortgage rates spiking up to 6.43 percent yesterday as the Biden administration is planning to force home buyers with good credit to pay more for their mortgages so that they can subsidize the loans of high risk borrowers. Experts reportedly estimating that good credit buyers could pay about $40 additional a month on a $400,000 mortgage. The rule is set to go into effect on May 1st. Bob, it's subsidizing those homeowners who probably shouldn't have the mortgage in the first place. Yeah, we've seen this before, haven't we? Yeah. When people were subsidized, whether it was autos, whether it's been homes, and then they default. And so it just comes back to bite you. But again, it's, it's another subsidy to try and buy votes, right? And, and I don't know what good credit is. I mean, is it a FICA score that determines that? Is there a price level by which the buyer, as I was mentioning to you earlier about L.A., they have this, uh, you know, rule out there now, if you sell your house, say, $5 million, you got to give uh, the governor 250000 for homeless. That's unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, like you're locked up in your home. Welcome, Welcome to the crypto, crypto teacher. teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And guys, we have the mainstream media hitting you again with the Hegelian dialectic, the Biden administration. But guys, we know it's the NWO's agenda. But we have good credit scores pay more for mortgage to subsidize the lower end, the more riskier mortgage borrowers. And guys, we know during the C word, if we go back and look at everything, it was all caused by the Fed. We know the lockdown manipulated mortgage prices. And now, of course, since the Fed printed all that money, we have inflation. And then, of course, they're raising rates to fight the inflation. And we know that's hitting mortgage borrowers. So even if you do have good credit, you're still paying a way higher rate than what you would have paid a few years ago. Now, on top of it, you're going to be paying more to subsidize a riskier borrower. So if you're already living in a home, what are you most likely going to do? You're going to stay put. And the Fed knows this. And guys, we still have the central banks raising rates. And we know the Fed is going to be probably raising one more time and then pause. But we have Argentina, like most emerging markets in South America, are forced to hike rates, turn to CBDCs, turn to a digital currency that's backed by gold, or either turn to China. So guys, we see all these countries making moves to get off the dollar. And who's forcing that? That's right, the Fed. So they can do what? Bring in the robots, algorithms, and drones. And we have AI-powered robots take over. And guys, we know the new data is gold. And then you're talking about adding the cloud, adding Ethereum smart contracts. You're talking about DeFi and then stable coins. You no longer need humanity. And like I stated, if you look back, the C word was a great crisis that brought this all in. It sped up the NWO's plan by 10 years. And the narrative that we get from mainstream media when it comes to the machines is that the people don't want the jobs. Or the work is too tedious. And guys, remember, all the teenagers and college students that could be taking these jobs. But remember, the NWO has already done the test. Sending you out free money. That universal basic income, but this time is airdrop. But this money is going to be programmable. Telling you what, where, and when and how to buy. And you have three to six months to spend it. Or poof, it's gone. And we see big corporations like Amazon have been preparing for this for over 10 years. And they will be able to sell billions. But guys, remember, it's not about the money. It's about the control. And remember, the crypto teacher told you, because he knows, when it comes to the new road order, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Outfitted with cameras and sensors, this autonomous robot is verifying price signs and looking for out-of-stock items. These cameras on the side are capturing images of the shells that are then uploaded to our cloud environment to determine what products are out of stock, what's mispriced, what's in the wrong position. Inventory is one of the biggest challenges retailers face. Missed sales from empty shelves and out-of-stock items cost U.S. retailers $82 billion in 2021, or about $1.6 billion a week. So this would tell us that the Snickers is low. 
and we probably need to get more Snickers dropped from our back stock and brought out to the floor. But an army of inventory robots is being deployed that would help retailers appease angry customers, boost sales, and respond to the ongoing worker shortage. Almost 900,000 retail jobs were unfilled at the end of November 2022. Retailers are competing in a very tight labor market still, and they're often having trouble filling jobs that are more physically intensive, like packing a box or refilling a shelf. So instead, they're using robots in some cases or automation to fill those types of tasks and having people do skills that use their brain, that use some of the skills that a robot would have a harder time replicating. Count how much is there, tag in where it is, et cetera. So what this scrubber is allowing us to do is take all this mundane, really routine work off of our associates. For example, if a grocery chain with 425 stores had an employee at each location making $15 an hour who counted inventory for two hours each day, removing that one task could save the business more than $4.6 million annually. This is where the robots can help out being able to do this consistently on a daily basis. Right? They don't they don't call out sick, they don't get tired, they're ready to run on a daily basis. The median salary for a retail sales worker is twenty nine thousand dollars a year. More than fifty million US workers quit their job in twenty twenty two. I worked in a small grocery store, so if you were assigned the baking aisle, you were walking down, physically counting how many little bags of chocolate chips were in that bin, how many um, of each kind of jello. It was extremely time consuming. It was very frustrating. The precision at which you capture the data is just much higher than a person can do. Amazon launched its first fully autonomous robot, Proteus, over a decade ago. Today, the e-commerce giant has more than half a million warehouse robots worldwide. The warehouse robotics market was valued at $9.8 billion in 2021 and is expected to reach $23 billion by 2027. A similar expansion of inventory-moving robots could be coming to brick-and-mortar retailers. Going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go, but clearly we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations, we're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. It's crypto teacher and the New World Order book, plus the three kids' books is time to re-educate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks, the receiver, the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends, so therefore we can start the re-education now. Because as we see the fourth industrial revolution, 
foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.